that could work. So, okay, tell me more about Chewbacca's Wiener Thoughts. Uh, Chewbacca's Wiener Thoughts is my new band. Uh, yeah, no, it's it pretty, it's pretty good. All the vocals are just and then orgasm sounds. It's, it's great. It's uh, experimental rock, is what they're calling it, uh, right? Well, it's pretty tried and true, I think. Uh, sex cells and Star Wars cells, so you combine them with everyone's favorite. And you do everything in the most famous Star Wars musical stylings of jizz. Of jizz, yes. Yeah. Uh, star, the, it, we are a jizz band. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not to be confused with the jazz band, of course. Not to, no, 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 no. Heavens, no. <laughs> Kevin's no. Uh, jazz jizz. is the good one. Yeah. The good one that we have here on our planet. Jizz is the Star Wars one, where they do yeah. in Star Wars. Yeah, and it's played in all bars. By a species that actually can't reproduce. Uh, I like the fact that this went from, like, a gay, like, a gay deadpan lie to, like, <laughs> right, that is some of, like, the archaic lore, isn't it? That, like, the cantina band music is called jizz. As a it is called jizz, and the musicians, the species that they are, has evolved to the point where they can't reproduce normally and they need to be cloned. Well, that's because their head looks like a giant scrub. The, which, of course, is evidence for, like, you can be mad about the fact that they made a whole bunch of stuff in the Star Wars lore canon, but you can't say you don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And also, having an alien species that, like, reproduces by cloning, I I love that idea because essentially you could say that the Star Wars band from, like, episode four that was in the cantina doing mm -hmm. the do 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 Yeah, well, you know, we know, yeah. That was all just some guy who was just like, no one wants to play with me. I'm gonna make my own bandmates. <laughs> yeah, uh, like, that's kind of what my dad did with me and his other children, though, is because he had us, and then we all played music on his cool album. But that's like an investment to, like, maybe they're not as good. That's also how I'm not I, very good. That's also, also, that's how I made the intro music. <laughs> I just recorded over myself in Audacity playing a different instrument every time. Oh, yeah, you so didn't clone or procreate to, to have more... No, it did not involve... I was gonna that. say, that would make it difficult to do a live performance without actual clones of yourself. Mm -hmm. True. Anyway, welcome to Blood Wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a tangent. Yeah, it's so, let's start on the tangent now. When last we met, there were some false identities assumed. There was some recon done, and you guys sent out Elmira and John Stone to keep track on Vulcan's whereabouts. Yes. You are at the manor that you've inhabited late at night, and all of you have gathered in. Well, where are you gathering for your big meeting? My office. It's a very crowded meeting, then. The library's a little small. Reggie is on the outside, because he thinks he takes up the most room. Why don't we just go into a living room? <laughs> I mean, okay, if you want to be deprived of all my maps and charts and... Strictly speaking, this this manor does not actually contain a living room. There's a lounge, which was turned into a ritual room, which has even less space, because you can't go in the circle. Dinner table. You guys all sort of, like... Like... When you, like when you're like meeting with a prof after they're leaving like a big like colloquium or something, like you guys all just kind of wander holding papers as a vague group into the next room and then sit down again and start working. You're all gathered around the table and well, let's get things on track. You guys are here to kill Vulcan, correct? Yes. yes. Singing to pass the time because I don't know if I actually brought my notes. Oh shit. No, they're there. Okay. <laughs> okay. They're just not. They're here. They're just not the here they're supposed to be. Mm, that's a very necessary here that they need to be, though. <laughs> and now they are. Oh. So. Wow. You guys are planning to kill Vulcan, correct? Yes, that's, that's, that's the plan. You have the following information. Okay. You guys are basically going through different presentations bit by bit, and the first people to talk to you are Tiffany, Edelwald, and Blue. You guys are going to need some wards and some disguises to get where you need to go. All the potential ambush spots spots that you could get to involve you guys getting closer to Vulcan. He is not vulnerable until you close in. Tiffany can alter your weapons and armor to make them stealthier, hide them, change their color. 
can also make small little contraptions, things like that if needed. Edelwald, of course, can make you some disguises, and Blue is able to pour, like put on ritual magic to alter your appearance or perceived magical identity, like changing your IP or a person. Hmm. Bea and Steel Fist are the next ones to roll out. You guys, no matter what you're doing, are going to need to smuggle yourselves around or sneak in and out invariably. It is just a safety precaution. Steel Fist is willing to tell you guys about all the great ways to conceal very, very illegal items on your person and talk to you about sneaking around. Bea, of course, has a lot of clout in a caravan people aren't going to look too closely at and can sneak you in and out of the right locations. Corvo and Absolution, for some reason, really, really, really want to talk about having an exit strategy. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense, because once we kill him, everything's going to go tits up and to hell, and we need to get out as soon as possible. Pretty much. Which brings us to the party. There is an upcoming party, which Mila and Benny, your false identities, have received invitations to, because you guys are prospective investors. You have received in, like, business terms an extra letter basically being, like, Oh, okay. Ow. That was literally coming through my headphones right now. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, um, my fire alarm going off. Apologies all... to our listeners. Yeah, I genuinely don't know why that happened and that why it wasn't more... Consistent. Because <laughs> I was about to press the button to mute it. But but it didn't. We might want to edit in something. Like an... So... Okay. Testing. The audio is back on. If it happens again, we're going to shut down the stream and evacuate for fire reasons. <laughs> yeah, that was a loud boy. That was a loud boy. <laughs> it's also like right there. Yeah. Well, no, it's it's over there. Oh. That's how loud it is. Oh. It's all all the way the fuck over there. That's just the button to shut it off. <laughs> now you say... Oh, maybe it's a little battery. No. Mm. Anyways, I would only beep once, wouldn't it? It would beep once, and it's like every fifteen minutes. There's no reason it would be. Mm. Maybe we're all gonna die. Mm -hmm. In which case. You, our viewers, can watch us die of carbon monoxide poisoning live on camera. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Love that. So the party. Love that for us. You guys are going to need to make your way in, but you've received, in no subtle terms, a letter that basically says, like, at this party you should probably pony up, okay. show that you're not just a prospective investor, that being said, you've still been invited to the party. This isn't just a meeting, this isn't a gala, this is an actual party at a guy's manor. You'll have some leeway and you'll be able to talk to certain people at the right time. Elmira and Johnstone have given you intel as to some potential ambush locations. Hmm. At the pass itself with the archways, if, and this is probably the riskiest option, if you're able to make your way onto one of the private tests, you'd be in just the right location to kill him and make a clean escape through the other side of the ice wall. As far as anybody could tell who was watching from the outside, test failed. Your other option is the factory where they're performing most of the manufacturing. This was, or this is in the same village as the place that Reggie cleared out with the Darklings. Here, uh, there will be guards, there will be potentially any number of countermeasures, but this might be the best way to hit him fast, hard, and have a quick way out of town because you're not in a city, you're in a village. The last option, of course, is you do it in one go. You're in the party, you're somewhere quiet, maybe you can isolate him, take him out silently, get rid of the body, and get yourselves out of there. So what do you think? Um... <sighs> Both me and Henny don't have any physical score. So, like, it's... Uh, yeah, but I, I, I guess fight. Yeah, but it's it's more of an assassination, right? Yeah, for sure. 
it's important to keep in mind as well that you guys need to keep four people at base for house sitting. Your yeah. coffers are also running low, and so your party members during the time of the party kind of really want to go and make some money. Four of them at least want to go and do a job. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're going to do this, you're going to have to pick who your team is. I see. Mm. And then we'll meet up later. <laughs> okay, well... I feel like Elmira was the best for assassination attempt. Yeah, Elmira definitely. Um, I mean, Rollins has an innate sneaking ability being the most of. Yeah. But he does tend to stand out without a disguise. Well, Rollins is wearing disguises. <sighs> the thing about the party that's good is that it is sort of the area we're most familiar with, you know, there's a lot less variables there in terms of... More people. You know, that's, that's what I was getting to that. There are going to be a lot more people, uh, you know, a lot more potential witnesses, um, and probably a lot more guards just because of it being his house and also mm -hmm. in the middle of the city. <sighs> the archways are a good, a good option. Um, because no one would be suspicious, you know, it'd just be a failed experiment. Mm -hmm. Um, the only issue then is we have to rely on his archways to get back out. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, everything he's done so far seems to work, but at the same time this is just an experimental test, right? Like, if it does go poorly, I mean, who knows, right? Mm -hmm. And that leaves the factory... I don't know, the factory seems to be a combination of just a lot of people, a lot of witnesses. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the factory as much. These are just these are just things I'm thinking initially. He's gonna be surrounded by other people basically at all times at the party. Yeah. It would be yeah. quite a task for us to get any time alone with him. A task that would fall primarily on me. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I don't know. Um. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be having him alone. It can also be him and enough people you can manage. It's true. That's true. Uh, I can certainly take on any of his guards. Could we? They're experienced, but... <laughs> but... Well, I mean... I'm glad one of us is confident. Yeah, I... I have uh, no physical abilities or skills in that department. I'm fairly confident I can manage probably about four, maybe five of his guards. Yeah. Well, you're also keeping in mind, you're only talking about killing the guy. Mm -hmm. You gotta get to the guy, you gotta get rid of the guy, you gotta do a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. This is true. Um, the party might be the what? best. If we're going to pull some sort of scheme to try and lure him out, I think the party is the best time to do it. I feel his guard will be a little bit down as opposed to the test of his flagship enterprise. Um, well, we need to put his head in a box, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, ultimately, yes. Head in the box. So it's not really going to be enough for us to just stab him in the neck? Yeah. We can't just stab, throw the body over, and mm -hmm. leave it. We need to decapitate and put into a box. Edelwald, of all people, speaks up and goes, in my experience, it's all about the isolation. Anyone can just kill someone. It's about getting in and getting out, and that's where we need the skills. Yeah. What if we use the box as a diversion, saying that it has an investment in it? Yeah, we could. Rollins sort of chimes in and goes, It's a box with a head in it. You could no. drop it out a window. No, no, I'm saying the box, because, like, if we go to a party, let's say we're doing the party, we go into the party, we got a box with us. You could drop a head out a window. We, we could just drop the head out the window, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm just talking practical solutions to material problems. <laughs> 
Mm. Yeah, I think, I don't know, I, from the previous parties that we've been at, I'm, I'm hesitant to, to, to think that we could get him alone, you know? I mean, I think it would be pretty easy to get him alone. We just have to... But he's always surrounded <clears throat> by lots and lots of people. Well, when we say alone, we don't mean literally just him. It's it's oh, a, enough degree of separation that we can... Decapitate him and steal his head? Yeah. No, and then exactly. get out? Yeah, that doesn't mean alone. It just means surrounded by a few enough guards that we can overwhelm them and get out. Also, how are we all going to get in? Like, we need four people to stay back here, yes. Mm -hmm. But how are we all going to get in? Because you have an invite, and that's it. Yeah. I could let people in through a back door if there are any back doors. I. Uh, this isn't like necessarily any other party. You kind of have leeway to bring like necessary consultants and like <laughs> financial advisors and stuff like that. Like strictly speaking, Benny hasn't been strictly like the invitee to any of these things. You've been there on behalf of a business partner, and mm -hmm. you can easily have other people there as business partners. It isn't necessarily limited in how many people you can bring to the party because it's supposed to be a big bombastic gala, right? Mm -hmm. But the limitation is more how many people you have to leave behind. Yeah. Total, you can pick five party members to go with you. The three of you presumably are all going. Mm -hmm. um, I think Elmira should come. Definitely. I could be an operator. And we need... Conk also wouldn't be too bad if things go south. Not a, not exactly the most like. But we need it. We need stealthy. a decapitator. Who's gonna be cutting his head off? <laughs> <laughs> Elbjorn is alongside you, also going like. I did it to Boru. <laughs> yeah. He, okay. Okay. So we need a decapitator. Yeah. I think we're gonna need a distraction. Um, I don't think we're gonna be able to get him alone. But if there's some way to keep everyone else occupied. And also do something to get him disengaged. I think we'd have a real chance. Um, is there somebody who's maybe showy with firearms? Could we do some sort of flamethrower demonstration? <laughs> <laughs> Can you enthrall a crowd with your... I mean, it's a flamethrower. But we are also going to the manufacturer of said flamethrower, who will probably also have people with the flamethrower. You well, guys also got this at a previous investor meeting, so there's probably going to be other people who got flamethrowers there. Yeah, well, what like, I'm saying, everyone will just be like, "Look how important I am of an investor." He gave me this. You're a. Are you decorated as a military? Yeah, but not in the way that the live drinkers like. <laughs> okay, well, okay, so maybe we don't have to say that. But what if we bring you in as sort of a military expert, and you are intrigued by this new advancement in military technology, and you are going to have some sort of competition? Everyone loves a bit of friendly competition. It's a brand new weapon. You know? Okay. And that so sounds dangerous. Rollins chimes in. You want someone who can get in and out of tight places, be a perfect reason to say I'm your lieutenant. Then we can talk military to each other, bullshit our way through town. If we we do, can definitely talk military. If we do that, then we can have... I mean, I feel like a lot of these investors are sort of riding high on the idea of owning a flamethrower. I'm sure they would throw their hat in. That might be a good way to distract some of the party. I don't like it. Okay, so Vesta, Vesta disagrees. He's on like a flamethrower shooting competition. Set Ooh. up some targets. Pew, 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 pew. It's, a, it's a flamethrower. It's <laughs> not pew, 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 you know. It is not a sharp shooting weapon. <laughs> that's yeah. a good you know, that's a good point. 
There's got to be some way to show it off, though. Like, yeah. oh yeah, I can think. Of but several we're also ways. like it gonna be inside. You Actually, know? it's more like one specific way, which is just pulling the trigger. But you do it multiple times, and it's real showy. <laughs> well, you do just need a distraction of some sort, right? Right. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just spitballing ways that we could enthrall what everyone has in common that would interest all of them. Steel Fist, would we be able to use your magic in conjunction with the flamethrower to do a performance? I don't know, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have Wilding Salt. <laughs> Ooh! Let's just put the Wilding Salt on the nuzzle and, like, do it and just... <laughs> this is the illegal Wilding Salt, uh, right? Give me a mental alchemy ball. <laughs> It's like pouring gunpowder down a musket. Like, fifteen. Fifteen. You wouldn't even need to open the container if the bottle that contains the wilding salt itself was like, even for a second, licked with like the flamethrower flame, it would go. It would go. <laughs> it is a highly, highly flammable material to the point that like that much just presence of heat makes it go off. Well, there's another angle. Rich people like illegal substances. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where are you going with this? People will be more enthralled if we tell them that there's illegal substances involved. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Bea goes, drugs, 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 <laughs> drugs, and then Tiffany joins in going, drugs, 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 and then all goes, drugs, drugs, and by that point, like, half of your party is chanting alongside. <laughs> like, like, are you suggesting we do them now? I don't think it's going to help with the decision-making sort of process. Oh, the wild insult is definitely not going to help with decision-making. <laughs> Although, if we get everyone at the party absolutely high out of their goddamn minds, that uh, might wild, be an angle. Wild insult is not a drug, by the by. <laughs> no, we're not talking about wild insult. You're, you're talking about drugs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, okay. I'm just I'm just spitballing ways to get the crowd off our backs. Um, I mean, high people are generally less threat formidable in combat. It's illusion magic. Uh, um, can I, can I, what do I have to roll to do illusion magic? Is that mortal? That's that's blue or Vesta. Two. Well, I said Vesta's name second, so yeah, you could probably do some illusion magic. Oof. How would you- how- could you ritual illusion magic? That would be how you do it, yeah. It would be something you have to prepare well in advance. Mm hmm Okay, um... Can I put wildening salt on the illusion magic? <laughs> it would- I love this chaos okay. that you It would cause unpredictable results. <laughs> wilding salt. Illusion magic. Equals. Woo! Flamethrower. <laughs> Instead of normal salt, use wild and salt. Yeah. Johnstone and Red are sort of mumbling to each other, and then Red sort of looks up and goes, We could, if we need the exit strategy, we could go out through the firewalls, get right back into here through the firewalls. Firewalls, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. Um. I, maybe I'm overthinking. I'm thinking of a ploy. I, I like that idea, especially with the wilding salt. No collateral damage in the firewall. <laughs> Could we have... Now, maybe this, there maybe there's too many moving parts here. Maybe we're better off going in and stabbing them. But if we were to, say, have some sort of unfortunate accident, accident with the flamethrower, one of us gets hurt. We... Do you think now? Do you think Vulcan is a sort that would accompany us to the hospital or no? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Everyone not at the table not... in unison. No. Okay, but not even if there was a chance that he could just life drink someone dead without any any sort of suspicion. Like if someone says, "Oh, they, they're, they're just barely hanging on," do you think we could convince him to I finish don't... it off? You know, like like do you think we could we could play on that sort of greed? To Blue, lure him. Blue looks at you and goes, I don't know. You have both of us perfectly easily without something. I don't think he's that desperate. I think he's uh, going to laugh drink all of us a little bit before we get him down either way. Uh, maybe. Okay. This party is like a buffet for him. I'm 
So you're going to the party then? Well, I think the party. I don't. I don't trust that ring. I don't trust the ring. Um, it's sort of. It's sort of a home turf advantage, you know. Mm. At least with the party, it's. I mean, it is his house, but it's not a thing that he has constructed out of volatile materials. My my fear is that if we were to go after him in the in the tunnel, he would have some sort of self destruct or the capacity to self destruct it. You know, like Red chimes in. I hate to stomp on your idea, but let's be real. Why would we suspect that this dude hasn't actually built that shit into his house? Uh, well, I think his house probably has more volatile materials, and I'm not saying that to poo-poo the idea. I'm just saying that that maybe we should have that in consideration. Well, right, but there's also going to be, I mean, it's it's. If someone attacks him within the within the the rings and he blows them up, oh, failed experiment! If he blows up his house, there's everybody in there. That's. But no, to your point, I, I see what you're saying. Now, Blue, could we rig some magic to go off at a certain time to activate the V ring? Oh, easily. Well, one of us could set up the V ring with a little bit of wilding salt on the rim of it. Set it off to activate. It activates, causes chaos. Maybe we get an opportunity there. That's an interesting idea. Vesta, you could extremely easily set that up. Like, on the fly, like a minute flat. Literally set up a football. <laughs> We're the good guys! <laughs> yeah. We're the good guys? <laughs> no, again, I'm worried about... I mean, collateral damage. Then also... Well, I wouldn't set it up so that it would kill anybody, right? Nice. Just enough to, like, uh, everybody's like, whoa, look at that! Crazy! Long enough for oh. someone to go decapitate the dude, throw his head out a window, and ask for a piece of us, and everybody thought it is, and yeah. be run. You think of that as a distraction? Just a, just a little bit of chaos, yeah. Yeah. Mm. See, a popular, okay. a popular strategy of attack is you cause one distraction to sort of funnel people where you want, and then another, a more devastating explosion to where they're going to be. That way, you get more people in a general area. What we're going to be doing is something a little bit different. We're going to be causing the detonation to cause a distraction to then kill him. <laughs> okay, okay, I like it. All right, so who's on the list? We doing this? Okay, so so the, so your plan is we go to the party, or we we do this when they when they test the ring. We can do this anytime, really. Yeah. <laughs> but I do think we'll have more opportunities at the party because people are expecting a lot less fire at the party. So at the party, we go blow up the rings on the other side of town to cause a distraction. No, no, no. We, we have a V ring. We could also use the V ring there. There, there, the, there you're will... confusing oh, the oh, archways and the, the V ring. I see. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who I was, which I was told today by a friend, sounds like a contraceptive. The V ring. There, yeah. There's a re there's a reason why I called the kids out on their V cards because, like, <laughs> literally, I was just like, "What the fuck's a V ring? That sounds dirty." <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of, I I hadn't thought of it until this very moment. Yeah. It does sound a little dirty. It it sounds like something a tech company would come up with, but at the same time, if you have absolutely no context and just a little bit of a dirty mind. <laughs> yeah. So a tech company. Yeah, so a tech company. <laughs> okay, so I think the plan is there's going to be V-rings there. So we could just put a little bit of wilding salt on one of those, have it set to go off, you know. Yeah. A little while later. We get near him around the time that it's going to detonate. Get near him. Go with him in the chaos. And Actually, an opportunity. it doesn't need to be a timer either. It can be a code word. Okay. Like you're actually able to code word runes or something like that? Mm hmm Neat. Okay. Well, now I'm thinking, like, the V-rings that are there might just be going, like, just be on fire the whole time, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what they did at the other party. Or wait for one of them to go out, 
rig it, and then the next person to light it. Yeah, or the... we bring our own. Swap and... them out. Well, I was gonna say Elmira sets it up. Yeah, sets <laughs> somewhere. it up somewhere, somewhere that's not. Mm -hmm. Like, say, the exterior of the building, or if that doesn't look flammable enough, in another room where no one is. Well, uh, people have to see it. Have to see it happen, right? Not necessarily. The fire itself will be enough of a reaction. With the smoke and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Could we... So we have this distraction, this explosion. Yeah. Everything's in chaos. Yeah. Could we... Find the perpetrator. Say, hey, Vulcan, we figured out who did this. Like, I caught this guy with it. He says, like, we're going we're gonna to ask him what's up. He leaves the party to interrogate. We're there because we caught him. That could definitely be a plan B. We all stab him in the back. Absolution sort of narrows his eye and goes, Dominoes. Any good operation's got to be like Dominoes. A, B, C, D, E, F, done. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm saying the first domino is we make a big explosion. Second domino is we pin the crime on one of us. One of us says, you know, oh, I did it. I was suspicious. And then... I think that's too much time. Yeah. Too much time. Yeah, no, I I agree. I think after the explosion, we don't, like we need to be uh, in place and have it like explosion, distraction, people look away. We lop his head off, throw the head out the window. You just want to do it right there in the party. Right there. Like, we have to. Where else are we going to do it? We're never going to get him alone. There's a lot of variables if we do it just right there. There's a lot that could go wrong. There's well, a lot that could go wrong with any of these. That's true. Elbjorn shines in and goes, well, truth be told, it, like, we could just, the second we have an opening, Operate and run. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Keep signals between us, maybe a nod or something. I can tip my hat. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm worried about you doing that because you kind of do that almost on instinct every time you meet a new person. I do not. <laughs> okay, so we cause a big explosion. Everyone turns their head, and we detect. We just we just rush them and decapitate them. Well. We wouldn't rush him and decapitate him. Presumably, the explosion is so that people don't go looking while we work. Yeah. So that if anybody's about to walk in or moving down a hallway, they're not looking and we have... Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, we do this in a room with a hundred people. We're going to get surrounded and That's, what I'm, trying, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why I'm asking what the plan is to get him not in a room with a hundred people. That Improvise. Way. That's Improvise. that's what the box of money money is going to be for a private investment. So instead of a private investment meeting, yes. And then we have the box to put the head in uh, in advance. Okay, okay, that's something. That's something. And it looks at Rollins, and then we throw the box out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany nods. Uh, I can make a false bottom, or well, a false top on the box. Put a couple of gold coins on there, mm -hmm. a smaller investment, and then if any guards look. Yeah. Just got to be sure to get those coins out of there before we put the head in. Glue the coins to thing. Oh, good point. <laughs> Bea sort of goes, hmm, big business would be bars. Ah, uh, they could use bars. Uh, could that be where illusion magic comes in? Oh no, I mean that might make it easier. Just hammer something out of copper. Wouldn't lift it up, it's all heavy. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so we... We could it. use the illusion magic on the copper bars, turn them into something a bit more valuable. Okay, yeah, we're starting to get a plan here. Explosion is distraction. We... <sighs> so the bomb goes off. Mm -hmm. Presumably the bomb goes off either at the right time or via command yeah. when you guys have isolated him. Mm -hmm. You strike, you get the head, you get it out a window, go into the firewalls, get home. 
which means someone has to be outside. Yeah. To catch the head. To catch the head. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, if they're outside, presumably there's going to be guards walking around, so we would want someone who is able to avoid detection. Look directly at Elmira. <laughs> yeah. When you guys give me a signal or something when you're able to isolate him so I know where to go, and then I happen to leave, run around the side real quick. Yeah. Yeah. As I long think... as you don't just drop it out the window, wait till I'm in position. Yeah. You might you might have to stand in a room holding a head for a minute. But then how do we get out is my only concern. We leave with assuming the rest of the people who are evacuating because of the fire. Okay, that works. Um... Okay. There's going to be people in the room other than him. Yes. So there will be guards. Him. And it's unfortunate that their lives will be taken. You think he can just take the guards? Yes. <laughs> Presuming that I'm armed, of course. How are we going to get our arms in? Do they check us at the door? Actually, culturally here, if anything, it would be a massive insult for people to take your weapons. Okay. No That's not how they good. operate around here. We're good. We will have our arms and armaments. Yes, I can take that. Okay. And if not, maybe the flamethrower with a little bit of wild insult. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Certainly would be effective. <laughs> I assume. Yeah. Maybe we burn okay. a pinch of it. <laughs> but we still we're still gonna have to get him into a room with a limited number limited number of people. That's where our special investment comes in. Yeah. We walk in with a box and we say, Vulcan, um, I know that we've been taking a long time getting around, but I think we might have a special investment. And that's when we give him something. We have to convince him that it's not something you would want to show him in front of other investors. Right. And it can't be just, like, maybe it's not just gold. Maybe we show him a pinch of wilding salt, or we show him some sort of, I don't know, something to, something to intrigue him, something to draw him, something to show that we believe in his scam cult, something that says, hey, we bought fully in, we're putting our... Bayo sort of like glimmers and goes, sell it. He's never showing any of us what he's been doing. We don't need to show him what's in the box. We sell him just like he sells us. When you see what's in this box, you're going to love it. That's true. Okay. Okay. Um... Even then, then we just make it gold so that the guards can already have checked it and assure it's safe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, step one, hmm? we need to rig V rings. Uh, need to rig the V rings. Step two, get audience with Vulcan. Step three, distraction. Or decapitation. decapitation. Five. <laughs> Defenestration. Question mark, uh, question mark, question mark. Six. Head in a box. <laughs> right. So we have. Uh, so rig V rings. But that still also leaves the other people who would be joining us. Get out of Vulcan. Distraction, decapitation, defenestration. And if we are preparing this as a. Uh, military thing, then it would make sense that both Trunk and possibly Elbjorn are there as well. I was thinking of bringing Elbjorn. Elbjorn's not going to be good. I was thinking Elbjorn could be the decapitation guy yeah. while you uh, deal with the guards. I'm kind of loud. <laughs> are you sure? Uh, I mean, I, I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just thinking... So it's going to be me and Henny. And you. Well, that actually works additionally. Trunk, you are in fact very loud. Mm -hmm. 
You could be quite the distraction as well. Play it up. Really ham it up. Clunk, clunk, clunk. That sort of thing? Clunk, clunk, clunk. Fire. That's like the best bellow you could do. Really get the hall going. Sure, I could do that. Mm, because we don't have any rational minds going, oh, well, we've got an extinguisher and yeah, a bit of we water. Do not want, the last thing we want is that the elementalists, because there's sure to be at least one or two, to go and just put it out. We want panic. We want people to think that this building is going to go up in an instant. Uh, Vesta, roll mental alchemy again. That was a pretty good roll, actually. Yeah. <laughs> 19. They can't, actually. The elementalists can't put it out. Oh, yeah? It has to burn out, or an alchemist needs the counter agent, which is more rare than wilding salt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh. There's a reason this is deeply illegal. <laughs> I like, I like, like plants. <laughs> Like, you can just buy gunpowder. Wilding mm. salt is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> I like our plans. <laughs> well, it, I don't know. It makes me kind of nervous to leave Trunk around the wilding salt, you know? Like, we don't actually know what's, what's That's gonna, fair. What's going to happen. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be around the salt. Like, presumably, we've set this up in a place where it won't go off with people in it, so he will be safe from it. So currently... He just has to draw attention to it. So currently it's the three of you, and then you've got Elmira, Elbjorn, Trunk. That's three. You've got two more people you can bring. Okay, I'm just. I'm Someone right... needs to be on the outside. I was thinking even Rollins could be on the outside to catch the head. Uh, well, Elmira's on the outside to catch the head. So it well, could be because there's okay, so there's got to be people inside to defend me and Henny because there's going to be guards. Well, presumably we also need a lookout while we're doing this. Yeah. Even Henny, Henny could be the lookout. I could go in, really play up this box. Man, look, wait until you see this box. Like, I, I was so proud of what we what we put together for you. <laughs> kind of thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then... So who's... Okay, well, let's go through this uh, step by step. Who's going to rig the B-Rings? I am. You are? Um... So what's the plan? Are we just going to... Well, I'm, I feel like I'm the only one that would be able to set up the V-Rings. Oh, uh, right, but there's just a certain level of... Um... I mean, we could have Blue do it. Elbjorn chimes in and goes, well, we want people overwhelming in case of emergency. We want fighters, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, like, I need to be there. Henny... I think Henny could be our lookout. Mm -hmm. As I'm playing up this box. Yeah, so key roles that we have right now, rig the V-Rings, uh, Vesta, mm -hmm. and I'm going to say Elmira, if there's sneaking that needs to be done, a uh, sleight of hand, sort of switch out V-Rings for our mm -hmm. own or anything. Um, we could bring Bea. She would both be able to play up the investment and also help with the fight a little bit. Oh, Bea, that, yeah, the playing it up. Okay. I think Bea could be useful there. So getting an audience of Vulcan, Vesta, and Bea. Um, distraction, I think, I think that's on Trunk. And Trunk could also be great backup if things go south. And also, there's an easy out for you that doesn't require any sneaking. Is just fire, get everyone panicked, and stampeding out the door. So Trunk, Elbjorn, Elmira, Bea. Um, One more. So then the decapitation, Elbjorn. Did yeah. I include him? Yeah. 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 Elbjorn's yeah. So Elbjorn, he's going to be in charge of getting the head off of that boy. Um, and you're going to be you. Elbjorn and Elmira are going to be in the room with us. No, Elmira is at the bottom to catch the head. Unless mm -hmm. we we could have we have two options here. Mm -hmm. Rollins could be at the bottom to catch the head, or Elmira could be at the bottom to catch the head. Or I'm just I'm I'm hesitant to have only two people with us when we when we decapitate him. I can fight. I'm not. Yeah, Hany can, can, can definitely cover the exits. Okay. I can I can act I can act as lookout. Um, if you want me to. Also, I'm just really struggling. I know it's Edelwald, but I can't remember yeah. her name. Okay, I'll just name all your NPCs because there are kind of a lot of them that yeah. you could potentially be picking. There's, uh, right. There's Trunk, Cor Trunk, Elmira, Corvo, Absolution, Bea, Tiffany, Edelwald, Rollins, 
uh, blue, red, John Stone, Steel Fist, and Albjorn. Steel Fist would definitely be able to help in a melee. I don't think Corvo would be able to help much in a melee. This is, this is going to be close combat. <laughs> this is going to be close combat. Yeah. I think Steel Fist is a good idea. Um, we could also bring could... Absolution. Okay, so Box Elmira is going to catch the box, right? Yeah. Both, when you say that stuff with Steel Fist and Absolution, both of them at the same time, not on purpose, go, wouldn't be my first rodeo. And then, like, look at each other. <laughs> <laughs> well. There, there's a story there. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll put myself as lookout. Mm -hmm. um, Are you not comfortable being lookout? No, it's fine being lookout. I'm just... Uh, I, I, we have one more person. One more roll, and I think that we want them in the room fighting. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to think who would be the best at getting into that room if we want to have... He might be suspicious if we say, hey, there's five armed people we'd like to walk into this room alone well, with you. that's the beauty about Steel Fist. <laughs> uh -huh. Do you want to go up through the window? No, no he doesn't need the weapons. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right approach, but I will say that I do want to. <laughs> well, I'm just saying he would be more caught off guard if suddenly surprised there's a steel fist in the window. That's the last thing anybody wants, really, in a business meeting. <laughs> a steel fist, correct. Um, okay, so... Unless, of course... You're the primary business investor, and I'm a prize fighter with some dollars. I don't have to be smart. I can be dumb. <laughs> well, um, we've already set up the establishment that Vesta would be the money bags, I guess, in this situation. But either me or Bea. Like, Bea might be able to really, yeah. really sell this. You could be business partners. You We're an investor's yeah. group. We all have different reasons for being there. Mm-hmm. Investors group with an armed escort to guard the investment box. The investment box. I'm retired, it's really I'm retired military veteran investor. Elbjorn is the military guard. <laughs> uh, and sure, okay. Okay, so. One. I do have more experience in the area. <laughs> Vesta. With Vesta, with Elmira's help. Truth be told, that's kind of convenient. It means that they're not going to be asking me questions. Briggs, we went. <laughs> oh, right. They're going to be asking me questions. <laughs> Two. Vesta. I'm going to military mumbo jumbo the shit out of them. <laughs> also, I hope you realize you will not have paper once you're in there. No, but it's, it's, it's just good to write things down so no one's confused. And he just wants to write it down. <laughs> She has, like, I'm picturing basically she has all these papers spread on the table. She has, like, a painting of Lord Morgan from one of the pamphlets in there. And it's just like, oh, yeah. House. Me, like, drawing of the house mm -hmm. going to there. The Getting, mirroring like, on the table. Yeah, the string going to there. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, so this is step A, and we're going to follow this string over here, and yeah. over here, and in there. And I made a pentagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the total that you were going to have to sell Vulcan on Vesta, Bea, Reggie, Elder, and Steel Fist, and me coming up with you guys to see this investment. Alternatively, we could try and sneak people into the meeting. It is sort of a, oh, hey, we'll go and discuss the, you know, you have your guard guarding the thing, and then just the door isn't locked. And we, we all barge in. I don't know if he would be more suspicious or less suspicious if it's just a few people going into his office. I don't know if that will affect the guards, but I mean, I don't know. What do, what do you guys think? I think if we're an investment group, that that should be reason enough to have us in there. Maybe not Elbjorn, but Elbjorn could be close at hand. 
it certainly would make sense to go into a private room with a couple of guards, both on his side and on our side. Mm-hmm. Um, Elvior and Steelfist want to play guard? We could fake handcuff you to the box. Steelfist can be whatever he wants to be there. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> I will be prepared to cause a scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And then I'll stand guard, just make sure that and if anything bad happens, I can act as backup if needed. Perfect. Okay. Okay. I think we've got a solid plan. Do we want to have... I'll just bring some rope in case. Okay. Perfect. Like, tie the rope to the window. All right. <laughs> and belay out the window if need be. Yeah. And in that case, whatever. you guys get a good night's sleep. And it's tomorrow evening that you're going to head off to this party. But meet you guys at... This one here. My deceive isn't very high. My convince is pretty high, though. Well, well, you don't have to. You don't have to deceive him if you are convincing him that what in this box will shock and amaze him. That's true. You will never suspect what's in this box. <laughs> now you could get all the money from the investors here, or you could take a chance on what's in the mystery <laughs> box. Hi, it's me, JJ Abrams. <laughs> And then we get a whole bunch of beautiful women to come up with bo- like numbered yeah. boxes. Oh yeah. <laughs> See now I'm imagining JJ Abrams walking around with a box going, Hey, there's a plot here. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> salt, 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 salt. Right, so yeah, what's everybody's identities? You guys are locked in. You guys have some, which is why you're there. Yeah. Yep. Benny something or other. Benny, uh, academic and financial advisor to Mila. Mila, right? Mila Rockwell, Rockefeller, Rockefeller. <laughs> uh, Supply chain expert. I don't say much. Talk about trucks. Yeah. They announce to you guys. Yeah. And I will be useless. <laughs> Please don't ask me questions. I'm here on guard duty. Useless. Useless. Okay. Now, who has a box? Well, we need a box with a trap door in it. Well, we need a box with a trap door in it and one that looks like it could hold God knows what. But also a head. Is it more is it more also <laughs> is it more intriguing if the box is fancy or if it's just a plain nondescript box? I think nondescript crate makes crate. it seem like it's an interesting item. If it's a fancy box, it's also money. I go in the room because I'm carrying the fancy box. <laughs> yeah, you could be carrying the box. I think we could also have Elvion by our side. We might have to have Steel Fist sneak in. Steel Fist could also be helping carry the box. <laughs> yeah, so I'm thinking um, I could set off the. So it doesn't have to be a word, or can it be a phrase to set off the? It can be a phrase. Okay, because I so I could. Creativity. The game was rigged from the start. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. You're Um, already dead. Nutty. (laughs) Well, I was I was even thinking it could be something like the weather is so lovely today. You know? And that could set it off. Yeah, but then anybody could say it. That's true. Just in conversation. You wanna know something that nobody would ever say in their right mind? Don't doubt your vibe. (laughs) <laughs> because it's true don't just, doubt your vibe just walks into the room and it's just like hey Lord Vulcan can I get a vibe check <laughs> vibe check <laughs> steal this punch in 15 feet <laughs> see I don't know maybe it's maybe it's don't me being paranoid maybe it's me trying to overcomplicate it but I, I like the idea of, of steal this coming in through the window like Steel Fist can come in through the window if that's what you want. So the key word is going to be, oh hey Steel Fist. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey. <laughs> At this point, Elmira sort of furrows her brow, brow and goes, well, strictly speaking, it makes sense to have an adventuring party. You got the three people being protected and then Lita, main god, ranged, trunks another god, and then Steel Fist does magic. We're just who we are. Mm-hmm. Mm, the ultimate disguise. Okay. <laughs> that works for me. I, I, I 
furiously scratch out steel fist equals window. <laughs> Fine. You've convinced me. Well, now I gotta think of a good phrase. Because it can't be too crazy. I, I feel like it has to be a good phrase that you could, like... Oh, you're shaking that. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, that TV just shakes. Oh, yeah, because none of the cameras are on the table. Yeah, no, the cameras are Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. It's still hanging precariously. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Is it? This is still a ghetto setup. <clears throat> okay. Or get up, if you will. The whole point was that I wouldn't have to get up. <laughs> do you have to? How about the key word is farewell, laugh drinker? <laughs> what if it's. See you when you inevitably get out of this box, laugh drinker. <laughs> uh, what if, uh, what if it's something that, uh, mm. because okay, so here's here's how I'm mm. thinking this happens. We go into this room, everybody's all set up. I say the phrase, bomb goes off. We immediately decapitate him. Fight the guards. Eldrin starts to chuckle to himself. It's gotta be something nobody's gonna say at that party. Vulcan, you're full of shit. <laughs> Shook. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. I, I... I might say that. <laughs> I will, if that is the key word, I will hold back on saying that. <laughs> I mean, you could just make up a word. Vlorp. Ben. Vulcan, your plan is dumber than a dingbat. Dumber than a dingbat. I grew up with dingbats, alright? My father always kept them on the ranch because they're good at keeping bugs away from the, like, the grapevines. What if you, call, what if you just said cheesy walnuts? <laughs> what if they're serving cheesy walnuts? Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> That's... Okay. Well, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> Doesn't that also seem like such an hors d'oeuvre thing to serve on a high class it thing? Does. It's just like, it's literally cheese and walnuts. You could make this at home, but for some reason they're carrying on a tray and acting like it's fucking fancy. <laughs> you can call him bulky. No one's gonna call him bulky. Well, what if someone assumes that they're closer to them than they are? Uh, There's going to yeah. be a lot of skis bag investors. I like Elbjorn's idea. Elbjorn's idea is very good. Um, cheese walnuts. No, no, Reg <laughs> Reginald, you write. You, you, you write, don't you? Could you come I up with a phrase? Maybe a phrase for us that no, no author has ever penned? I don't know about that. I haven't read all the books in the world. But actually, the one that the ones that I have read are yours and Absolutions. And uh, well, it, let, let's just say that there are a lot of words not used in those. <laughs> okay. I need a big one. Uh, for yours, the main word was consent. None of them <laughs> said consent in that entire book. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, in absolution, there was a lot of consent in yours. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, well, strictly speaking, between the partners, yes, but they're the <laughs> moving on. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> monkey. What if it's just monkey? What? <laughs> Words that no one ever says. Uh, splendiferous. I don't know. I kind of like Vulcan, you're full of shit. Garfunkel, yeah. okay. Well, yeah, let's go with, with Vulcan, you're full of shit. Okay, <laughs> that's that's the one. I just, I worry that if any of these people develop a brain cell or two, they oh, might that come one, to that yeah. conclusion. <laughs> but, but they wouldn't say Vulcan, you're full of shit. They'd say Vulcan, oh. you're full of shit. Oh, yeah, no, okay, yeah, no, we're good. Yeah, no they're full to his face. Yeah, no, <laughs> what am I worried about? Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. So then Elbjorn... Reggie, Steel Fist, Vesta, and Bay. I'm already, I'm already, I'm already doubting this this phrase. 
Yeah. Hey, I, I just donated it for like a full five minutes for you. Oh, as you guys argue about phrasing, the rest of your companions go off to get their disguises together. Okay. I think it's a perfect phrase. Um, worst case scenario, just do like a like a. No one's gonna do that. I can't do that. <laughs> just do one of them. Sorry, that was... Why why do both of you just like like it's one of these things like the fucking Oh, that? <laughs> now I want to like We don't have time for this. Okay. okay. Literally I know I do that because that's what my dad does. It's a habit of my dad, so I picked it up as a kid. A dab it. Yeah. <laughs> God. Reggie just goes, that's what the teens were doing outside. I don't really know what that Oh, dabbing is. would be it. No one's going to dab at the party. <laughs> what are you talking about? Everyone's going to be dabbing. To be fair, it would be dope as shit if you just went and an explosion went off in the other end of the building. <laughs> the ultimate base boost. <laughs> oh, and what about the freeze beta cuck? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it has to be dramatic, you know? I'm a Vulcan, you're a beta cuck. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to go that far. That's that's just vulgar. <sighs> like, let, let's call him what he is. He's full of shit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, let's stick with it. Alright. I believe Reggie does not have a disguise. I do not. I do have a green cloak that is slightly off from my skin color, mm. uh, and some definitely not fancy uh, breeches and some trousers, and my armor, which is pretty regal. Mm -hmm. mm. And, and your hat, which is bright teal. Bright teal. <laughs> and a half cape, which is also bright teal. Bright teal. If they've heard any description of me, that will definitely give it away. <laughs> Okay, so you need a new outfit. Yes. <laughs> uh, you see that uh, Elgdorn's actually getting his armor plated. He's getting it sort of like covered in shit and darkened up to be all black type of thing. That sounds good. Yeah, we would actually be forming unit that way. Let's get our armor darkened. All right. Darkened, I guess. Uh, likewise, you have an opportunity to take a look at the extensive collection that Edelwald's created in term, in some way, shape, or form. There's a lot of clothes there. Some of them have been pilfered or bought. Most of them have been thrown together. Anything you want to swap out? Well, I think that uh, maybe my hat, cape, and cloak or my hat aren't as fashionable as they used to be. So we'll probably end up swapping those out. What are you swapping them for? I don't know if I want a new half cape. Probably just a better shirt. Mm -hmm. Something that matches the green cloak. Stay warm. Uh, and as for the hat, I still like hats. <laughs> There's a nondescript gray one that's more or less like your last one. Okay. Likewise, green shirt is a very broad description, so you're quite easily able to find one. Edelwald has to alter it, but, I mean, that's what he's doing all day, so. Any other last-minute preparations until we jump ahead? I want to get Blue to put some um, magical wards? wards on me yes. um, to hide my person IP, my magical IP. That would be uh, probably good for all the members of the team at this time. Well, they don't really know who I am. <laughs> they know who I am. They definitely know who you are. <laughs> yeah. They don't know who I am. Me and Elby. Last right we there. heard, they were looking for Reginald Clark's wife. Well, Blue goes to the ritual room to set up the circle and get everything it's ready. Okay, yeah, Reg Reg <laughs> Reggie says that, and you say, it's okay, buddy, and then he goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> he had genuinely been fine until that moment. <laughs> Reminding him of pain. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm best at. <laughs> all right so as you guys get your stuff together and as you drop off your armor to get it all 
put together. You go one by one through the ritual room, maybe 20, 30 minutes apart. You're all given sort of like a magical cloak, so to speak, so that instead of detecting as Vesta, you detect as Mila. Instead of detecting as Henny, you detect as Benny. Okay. <laughs> what in the goddamn? <laughs> uh, what? Oh yeah, right. What's your fake name for this? Eustace. Eustace. You are Eustace. Here's my dad's name. <laughs> it's not the most creative, but you know. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say it's my dad's name because my dad's name is Reggie, but it's his middle name. <laughs> mm. Does your dad also dislike the name Reggie? No, he loves it. Oh. <laughs> well, with everything put together, I'm presuming you guys all arrive at once as a contingent? Yep. All right. What time have we got? Synchronizing our watches on almost 9 p.m. So, yeah. Last minute preparations. Anything you want to say before you're locked in? Um, I have looked and looked for some sort of map of the fire of the fire halls. Have I found anything in the library or around anything to help us? Nothing even remotely useful. Okay. You find maps. You find lots of maps and they conflict. Well, I'm taking those maps anyway, just in case. Well, we one last lost. question. Uh, can I have a pinch of that lava? <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying a good way to escape involves a flamethrower and wilding powder. Or wilding salt. Yeah, I give you like a pinch of it. I'm just gonna <laughs> put it on a little pouch on this side. <laughs> <laughs> Careful with that. Uh, steel fist, a uh, good way to conceal a small pouch. <laughs> He goes, truth be told, and he walks right up to your belt, because it's a real small one, right? He just tucks it in the, in the inside. That'll be easy to grab in a pinch. Uh, Reggie, what does Reggie usually, usually fight with? Danax. <laughs> Luckily, a long coat is a nice way to just sort of put it in there. Yeah. And if anybody asks, you're supposed to have a weapon. All right. You're anxious through the day as time passes, making last minute preparations and waiting for things to be ready. You scope out the place at around noon when you have an opening, just to look at it at least one good time. There should be a lot of different windows you might be able to toss someone through, which is both a benefit and a curse. It means you're gonna have to be clear when you communicate, but at the same time, you have a lot of versatility. Did we decide on signals? Because Will's done this before where we haven't decided signals. And I know he's trying to ping us on that. <laughs> Look, you guys are doing a highly coordinated operation. Of course I'm getting granular. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I feel like the fucking place exploding is a pretty big signal. Well, um, yeah. But at the same time, what's our signal to Elmira to get the in place? Hang a jacket out the window. When you walk in, be like, so if Elmira's going to be inside the building, as soon, as soon as they get their, the V-rings in place, everything else, Elmira's booking it. They're, they're outside mm -hmm. by the wall. When we get into the meeting, find some sort of casual way to place a jacket. There's a lot of fire going to be going on. Just on so the, you are a little bit hot. On the windowsill, mm -hmm. yeah. And just be like... Especially our kind of folk. Yeah. And so, then Elmira will say, ah, oh, that's the window to be under. You got to... Big, notable coat. That'd work. Yep. Elmira, what's going to be your signal to drop the head? Hmm? Um, Elmira told us to wait until she's in position to drop the head. Chickadee. Okay. Not the word, the bird call. Yeah. Chickadee-dee-dee. <laughs> the ghost of Salas is like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse you? Eska fuck? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then I'm assuming we don't necessarily need a signal for when we're entering the room, seeing as we're all planning to go into this room together. Yeah. <laughs>
Now, I'm not saying, like, this is nowhere near what you've described, but I can't help but imagine Reginald dressed, like, with the Hawaiian shirt and the big fake mustache. <laughs> this is beautiful. It's, it's very, um... He has a fedora. It's vacation Reggie. Yeah. yeah. Reggie Snowbird a... Reggie. Snowbird Reggie. It's Reggie on a beach. Yeah. <laughs> Reggie gets a report that there's too many fucking earth elementals on a beach disturbing everyone who's trying to relax, yeah. and that's, that's... That's how he shows up. That's, that's how he shows up. It's the Scooby-Doo gang. It's how the you, beach episode. How did he grow a mustache? We don't know. It's the beach episode! It's, it's beach the beach episode, episode we've Have so we had long. a beach episode? No. I think we were promised a beach episode, but it quickly didn't turn Oh, the beach, beach episode, episode is the time that we got attacked by a full armada. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> and Silphus got nuked. Yeah. That was... My tail's still five degrees off center. <laughs> okay, well. That was our beach episode. It's the evening when you guys make your way up the street. Perfect. Perfect. Right. You aren't the first ones here, of course. You're arriving fashionably late, as you should. You have for yourselves. Uh, don't go too far. I'm just going to polish this off. Yep. Why, thank you. Figured we need to be hydrated if we're gonna do heist. <laughs> Heistrated. Exactly. Hail heist straight. So yeah, you guys arrive outside of the Vulcan Manor. It isn't his, it's just when he's renting out. So there's no like grand Vulcan insignia or anything, but you can still almost feel his presence. There is like um, actually -ing, that you can almost hear echoing around the streets themselves. You can see, of course, prominently placed V-rings, and even though it's not part of the building itself, there is, of course, a big archway with Vulcan on it that's been put for the party guests. <laughs> you guys make your way up to aforementioned arch, all of you, when you're checked by security. All of them, of course, want to know your Identities, your identi your purposes for being here, and they want to check if you're on a list. Neil Rockefeller. All right, Neil Rockefeller, and anybody else who would be on the list? Uh, yes. Um. <laughs> ben yes, Benny. Basketball. Basketball. <laughs> I was thinking yeah. you were gonna say your own name, but. Ah uh, yes, uh, financial advisor, which means I take up the rest of your retinue. Yes. Of course. Uh, they flip to another page. Could I get your names then? Um, Eustace Bogwell. Eustace Bogwell. They go to Elbjorn and he goes, Elveld Lichtenstein. Elveld Lichtenstein. They go to Elmira and he goes, Chibiwitz. <laughs> Chibiwitz. Go to Trunk and he goes, Trefall Ebstein. Freefall Epstein. And who am I forgetting here? They go to Steel Fist, right? Yeah. Or Bea. Well. Right. Bea. Bea. She goes by Lucrezia, just one name, and she's insistent upon it. <laughs> and last of not last but not least is Steel Fist, who goes by Gold Fist. When questioned on it, he goes, it's his stage name. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this? It's not my real name. And, uh, okay. <laughs> any questions about our cargo? <laughs> like, no, like, out of out of game, are they questioning? Oh, thank God. Yeah, I'm not saying any, any, uh, questions? any questions. Would you like to open up and see? Perhaps get inside. <laughs> so, presumably, you don't just have a fuck ton of wild salt, like, just on yeah. it, right? No, no, no. Uh, where do you conceal it? I have concealed it as um, Steel Fist has mentioned, just like in the belt, mm -hmm. in like a little pouch. All right. You get a pat down, and right as they go for your belt, both of you guys, the same thing happens. There's loud clunking of all your pouches and stuff, and the leather getting together, and they don't even hear as they keep going down. They check you, of course. They look at all your weapons. They take an inventory of them. They begrudgingly let you inside because they can't get rid of them, but obviously they inform their guards who it is who's armed. Uh, and last but not least, they check the box, 
They raise the lid, and you guys, of course, it's a big crate, it's big and empty. You see a bunch of standard issue copper bars on top. They go, they pick one up, there's a copper bar underneath. They hand you back the box. I would love that the first way that Will fucks us over on this is when they're doing the pat down. Turns out they're an elementalist and they just activate just a little bit. <laughs> and all of a sudden, both of our belts at the same time just go. Well, it'd be really funny if it's like, oh, uh, exploded. <laughs> you weren't hurt, but your pants fell down because your belt broke. Oh no. <laughs> you take Ben's nano point in embarrassment. <laughs> embarrassment, damn it. Oh god. <laughs> Well, you guys Brady made... would never take that damage. <laughs> <laughs> no. You've made your way past the archway, and this is a tight city, so there's not much space for outdoor gardens. These are very much for show. You make your way up a short walk and through the door. From there, you open things up and you see the inside. All sorts of people leaning up against, you know, the walls, talking to each other, dressed to the nines. You guys thought that Vesta was dressed ostentatiously, but she fits in. Around here, everybody's gold, pearls, furs, any number of designer outfits. As you look around, of course, you see that there's all kinds of fire regalia. Uh, there are, it seems, other people with the same idea. There are guards here, for sure, that are Vulcans, but a lot of them are also like personal guards for other investors. There's people who similarly like seem to be the actual hobnobbers and other people being experts and professionals tagging along with them. Can I have like a subtle look around to see like and identify all of Vulcan specific guards? Yep. Especially ones that would seem like they would be like there at the meeting. Mm -hmm because they're important or higher up or whatever. You look around and you see that for the most part, there's like door and archway guards, prim and proper, all the same uniform. The ones that are sticking around, you presume to be Vulcans and they're all just simple black. You don't notice where Vulcan's guards are because they're not with him. You don't know where he is. This is just sort of the grand entryway. You can make your way around, along the hallways on this floor or up onto the above floors. You saw from the outside that there are three floors. Sorry, Reddy doesn't take embarrassment damage, but he does take divorce damage. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> Sorry, the whole time I was thinking of that. You just needed to clap back. I needed to clap back. <laughs> Fucking Penny only takes embarrassment damage. She takes embarrassment damage every second she exists. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sorry, <honey. laughs> Yeah, being socially awkward is much harder than divorce. And then Reggie and Henny just start brawling in the middle of this, being like, You're more of an embarrassment! That's not what your wife said to me! <laughs> That's not what your wife said to me last night when I helped her sign the papers. <laughs> As you guys are bickering amongst each other, Shrunk just leans in and goes, Let's find the man of the evening, shall we? I think yeah. that's a great idea. <laughs> and this is where we start another Leland Salas. <laughs> oh, goodness. goodness. Okay, um... At this point, it's when both of you guys presumably walk off and the rest of the party is about to, the trunk holds you back. He waits until the two of them have gone back, have gone away a little bit, and then he lets go as he goes, They could get along if they had something in common, like style. Oh. And then you break. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oof. Feels bad. Okay. okay. So, let's go Lock one by one. Trunk. The rest of the party is going to flit around in the background. Where is Vesta going? Vesta's searching for, uh, searching for the man of the evening. Yeah, but where? How? You're at a party. Yeah, okay, so if I look around, what do I see? Currently, you're just in the grand entryway. There's one of those big double staircases. Uh, there's a couple of doors you could go out. Like Some in of them... the Titanic double staircases? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can see that, like, on either side, there's a subtle door, which is clearly, like, a servant's door. There's two open sets of doors on either side that seem to be where party guests are meant to go. There's a mezzanine on the upper floor, and then there's an upper mezzanine from that you don't see how to access, but there are party guests on all of the floors. 
I go up. All right, you make your way up the grand staircase at a br briefly at sort of the crescendo, presumably as Mila. You're sitting there with your furs and red dress and pearls and just go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's when you notice something that the party hasn't noticed before. One of the door guards, um, like up on the upper mezzanine, is a rat folk with a fez. Uh-oh. Luckily, you're fully disguised. Like, even your fur is changed. What would I have to roll to figure out what the most dramatic way to make an entrance into this party is? Like, could I roll slas, yeah, sleuth to be like, which door would be the biggest huzzah as he saunters in? Unfortunately, you already went through the grand entryway, and that'd be the one. Or are you Damn. looking for Vulcan's entry? Vulcan's entryway. Well, the party's already started, so presumably he's mixing about with people. Mm -hmm. Maybe, but you could be... Okay. Okay, he's probably at the floor then. There would be a set of double doors at the top of the grand staircase. However, those are open, and uh, there's already people talking in there. Okay, so he's, he's probably out and about. Um, Where's Henny looking in this party, trying to find some Vulcan? Henny is looking around for... I guess for complications. Like, my first immediate thought is... You know, we gotta get where's the best place to set up the explosion, but that's also not my job. But I'm just I'm just looking around to to see anything that could okay. be a possible cog. So basically you just do a walk as if well, like a party guest, you're trying to see where people are, but you make your way through the place as a whole, trying not to find Vulcan but to find like a subtle place. You after a little while see that there is a neglected section of hallway that's a little like further from everyone else and it's not that it's closed to guests, but not a lot of people go here. Okay. There's a blind spot with the guards around here, and you might be able to set one off when one of these goes down. Yeah. It's then that you notice, uh, as you're making your way back to the core of the party, that there's a couple people talking that haven't noticed you. There's, in a tux, a very clean-cut man with a handlebar mustache and longish hair that's blonde. It takes you a quarter second to realize that this is someone you know. Likewise, sort of sleazing against the wall, also in a tux, is a laypine chatting someone up. Nice. No, 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 no. Walking, luckily, away from you at the far end of the hallway, you see the back of the person who bumped into you in... Uh, Hammerhold. You don't know their name. Oh, shit. Shit, 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 shit. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go find the others and inform them. Alright, the first person you encounter is Reggie. What? How would you be trying to make your way through this party? Start working out the plan. Uh... Reggie is the most, like, direct method ever he walks up to like a group of people who are just standing there mingling and tries to like co-mingle acting as a military expert who is very interested in the flame like the flamethrower and then like slips in the have you seen the guest of honor tonight like do you know where they are like stuff like that last you heard he was at the hors d'oeuvre table but they said he was intending on going upstairs. I see, I see. Reggie. Yeah. There's some, uh, some unexpected guests. And they kind of, kind of subtly motion over towards the, uh, the Chet and the, uh, long-haired man. Yeah, shit. <laughs> uh, Reggie instantly, like, pulls his hat further down, but, like... He's a fucking Tortugan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see your companions conferring on the far side of the mezzanine. Elmira Steelfist and Elbjorn have mingled about the area. Bea is similarly out somewhere trying to find someone. Uh, Trunk is staying in the Great Hall, basically. Okay. Just waiting until he knows where to be to make a motion. Uh, I continue forward. Up, so up the stairs. Vesta. You, uh, you're like way at the bottom. Ah, where's Vesta? 
I'm on the stairs. Okay. There's no way you could whisper to me. All right. You see your companions conferring, but decide to filter your way around the party itself. Where are you going from here? I continue just up the stairs. Like, have I made it up the stairs? Yeah, you're on top. You've made your way up to the top of the okay. stairs. You said there's a double doors? Mm -hmm. This to seems them. to be like a big... Um, they're calling around here. It's not a dining dining room, but it's like a drinking room, basically. Mm -hmm. More for people to sit around and have a drink around a big fire than to like sit and have a meal. Okay. There's a number of people sort of slinking around here having conversations. You smell cigars somewhere further away. Follow it. All right. As you follow the scent, you bump into Elmira, who's also following the scent. You sort of narrow your eyes at each other, make your way around another staircase, and then you hear a familiar voice through a door. Oh. Yes, yes, that's what I was doing then, yes. We, we have a project going on that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, we found the boy. Perfect. Now that we have a location, head back downstairs. All right. On your way back downstairs, you briefly, in your full disguise with Elmira, lock eyes with Chet. Doesn't click, and then keeps moving. Perfect. Of course it wouldn't click with fucking Chet. <laughs> Chet's just like, hey, laugh on Hey. <laughs> Want to come sit in my laugh on You bumped into Elbjorn. Once you mention that you've got a location, he sticks with you. And before long, you get back to this entryway. You still don't know where Steel Fist and Bea have run off to. But you've got most everyone back in one place. I need to find Bea. Have yeah. you checked out the V-Rings? I have not, not yet. They're pretty neat. Yeah. Wouldn't want to miss out on them. Yeah, no, absolutely. They're kind of a big reason why we're here. Absolutely. Uh, okay. I just, I I really want to show uh, all of our friends the V-Rings. That's all. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're just standing there going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, search for Bea. Bea, 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 Bea. Can I roll salute to figure out where Bea would have gone? Mental yeah. specialization, Bea's location. <laughs> Actually, although this is social salute. Damn it. Well, it's still like... Yeah, you don't get a plus 10 on it, unfortunately. Oh man, I have a, that was a 10. So a 10-10? It is a 10. Maybe getting a drink or a, an hors d'oeuvre or some food or something? Uh, go check out the drink or hors d'oeuvre or food or something table. Alright, you wander over and you see that clearly Bea and Steelfist went the same place. Both of them, like, have full drinks and have just finished getting full plates of food. <laughs> Okay. okay, so, um, well, we figured out where our, the guest of honor is. Um, sort of step one of our investment plan is ready to go. Um, when, I, when I come back and... Steel Fist looks at you guys, and you don't expect Steel Fist to be the one saying this, but he goes, Exit strategy. Firewalls. Where? That's true. Uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Of the maps, I... Uh, I have a feeling that Henny would have made note of where the closest firewall was on our entrance. That's what I was trying to do, but all of these maps, there's no... No, I the mean, maps. just visual look over. There is a canal that is fire protected. <laughs> I mean, if that's an option, if, there, if there's a clearly marked firewall, fire hall entrance... They're not supposed to be clearly marked. They're not supposed to exist at all. But everyone does it. Uh, okay. Um, well, I will try and find that. Go meet up with Vesta and uh, plan out our presentation for Vulcan. All right. You've got to get the uh, V ring set up, right? Yeah. All right. Elmire's with you. All right. Is this a ritual? Well, you guys make your way up to the hallway. And before you get to that point, you see that what was a nice deserted hallway now has 
two people sort of just talking to each other, leaning against a post. They're just going off like, yeah, I just wish I was part of the inner circle, you know? Like, it makes you wonder what's going on in those conversations. But you gotta be a big spender. I know what I want to say. <laughs> but I am not there. Yeah, uh, let's just stand here, like, a little bit too close to them and just start mm -hmm. talking, just start talking, like, you know, big and loud. Like, oh, man, love Vulcan. Like, I just love what he's doing right now. I it's, love everything about it. You know what? It makes me so, so happy to see this kind of innovation uh, coming to our city. Odds or evens? Evens. Roll it. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Odds. Odds. <laughs> They join you. You know, right? He's a visionary. It makes you wonder, like, of all the people out there, why hasn't someone done this before? I know. I know it's right? just so crazy. Reggie leans in, like, <laughs> he's towering, but, like, he leans in. Um, and he just kind of goes, I heard. Trade secret. <laughs> <laughs> Bet. He really likes investors who are bold. Because, I mean, look at this strategy. It's so bold. It's all about, like, gestures, grandiosity. That's the thing. I know a couple of guys in the inner circle. They say the way to get into the inner circle is to be bold and just go in. Exactly. You got to, like, you got to show them that you're not anybody. You're about the Vulcan ideas. That's what it's about. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. They aren't going anywhere. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, roll me a I was trying roll. to convince them to go in. <laughs> My detective skills coming in handy at last. Ooh. Could I roll convince to have them go in? <laughs> well, when we jump back. Yes. 17. Uh, that's a 26. 26. You make your way past the hors d'oeuvres table. Uh, you've linked up with Bay and Steel Fist. They say that they've talked to the help and that the only thing that they know, in case of emergency, is that it's on the third floor. Third floor it is, then. You make your way up there, and you've started going from corner to corner. Unfortunately, you do end up finding the firewall entrance. Although, your own place had two, this could be only one of several. And it's, like, one floor above the V-ring that's set to blow. Okay. Well, um... You could roll again and try to find another one. Sure, why not? Not like I'm doing any social help. Huzzah, oh man. That's a... 11... 20. 20. 20. Alright. You follow this same one, you start to think about where the building is and what it intersects with. You don't find anything else on this floor, but once you go to, like, the opposite stairwell on the opposite end of the building, you go down a level, you realize that halfway down the stairs is another one. That could be a safe exit. Okay. Uh, well, you have two possible exits. I say we split up, make sure everyone in the group knows about where they are, and then meet up at best stop. Alright. You and Bea and Steelfist all decide to meet back at the hors d'oeuvre table as well, updating everyone about the plan. Okay. Meanwhile, you guys are out here. What did you roll? I rolled 10 to convince them to fucking leave. I, I would <laughs> like to I would like to help that convince. Alright. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Reggie starts at best and takes it away. <laughs> uh, 19. 19. Alright. So you're going like big bold strategies, you know. Like, you really need to just go, go, and and then Vesta oh, jumps in and goes, just go talk to him. It, the thing that makes you in the inner circle is just being in there. You have to just go, like he's saying. And you mention, you know, I heard last time that he was on the third floor, and you mentioned, like, the room where, who was it who had heard Vulcan talking? Yeah, so you know exactly where it is. You mentioned that location. <laughs> you mentioned, like, yeah, if you go and see him, like... That's how you do it. They nod, and they go off to that location. You're clear. We're clear. Okay, let's set it up. I'll watch. <laughs> okay, so it's ritual? Yep. Whew. I was mediocre. Um, nine plus three is 
12. You set up the incantation to go off when you say the phrase. Vulcan, Vulcan you're full of shit. Yeah. It feels stable. It's not that complicated a ritual. This is really just like a ritual trigger, like when you do mm -hmm. elemental glyphs. So you got it. Now, alchemy. You have to handle the wilding salt. Nice. Okay. Six. Eight. Thirteen. Um, Sixteen. Sixteen. You take it out and you carefully dust. It's then that you feel a sneeze coming on. What you need is a 25. Are you taking damage to pass? Yes. <laughs> this is just like... <laughs> <laughs> you, okay. just, you just go rigid like you got rigor mortis. You're just dead still and you just go... <clears throat> and keep going. <laughs> you dust it and it's prepped and you've spread it out thin enough, which you have to because otherwise it all clumps and blows up mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be perceptible unless someone looks close and notices the little shimmers it's good perfect let's rejoin really the party yeah all right you guys head down to the grand entryway but you don't see the party we should look around for them <laughs> where are you looking um I guess just head up the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You guys go up the stairs trying to find the party. Meanwhile, you're on the first floor, and you guys have been waiting for like five minutes, and you haven't heard anything from your companions. It's then that you see Vulcan make his way just outside those double doors into the grand entryway. You guys see him coming from like another set of doors once you've made it up to the mezzanine. Mm -hmm. He goes, and he's got a glass clinking, and he goes, Can I have your attention, please, everyone? People go quiet, and they all start to crowd in. He goes, I would love to meet all of you, of course. If you would like to speak to me, please come see me. I am interested in talking about the material aspects of our venture. Thank you. And there's a mob of people that start talking to him. Okay. Perfect. Well, we have to get the group together in order to initiate plan two. Yeah. Ba phase. Part B. two of this. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay. Numbers always take computer. <laughs> now you guys are still at the hors d'oeuvre table, and it's basically just you, the help, and then a couple of, like, assistants or guards that don't need to be there. Can I see the hors d'oeuvre table from where I'm standing on the second floor? Nope. But you know that Vulcan, you just saw that, like, Vulcan is get, getting everyone to mob in and talk about the investments. Yeah. Okay. Kind of, well, loiter, I guess. We should also grab our crowd crowd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so you guys have everyone else? Like, I, I just don't know where There's everybody me. is right now. Reggie's with me. Yeah. Um, um, Elmira was with you as the other lookout, if needed. Mm -hmm. And then everyone else was with uh, Yeah. Okay. Trunk is in the main room ready to cause cause chaos okay. well um i guess we should head up to that crowd and wait on the outskirts it seems like that's where they would be waiting for us all right after sitting there you decide begrudgingly to break with the plan and sort of just walk away from the meeting point and head out into the grand entryway and you see the other oh, people at the wrong side of the well no because you said you were going to meet up with people in there i thought we were all Sorry, I'm confused, because I thought we were all going to meet yep. in the hallway. No, the hors d'oeuvre thing, that's what... This is not an important thing to be quarreling over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not quarreling, I'm just confused. Um, I'm not did, saying you're quarreling. Did Did Vesta and Reginald know about the hors d'oeuvre table in the meeting nope. point? Okay. okay. That's why this happened. They yeah. were completely isolated. From I see, that's, that's, why I'm so, okay, that's why I'm saying, okay, I'm heading up there to talk to, mm -hmm. like, See if I can find them. Yeah. Because that seems to be where everyone's gathering. You regroup, but you're on the opposite sides of the mob, and Vulcan is halfway up, like, one side of the grand staircase where people have ambushed him. What how, What would I have to roll to do a sign language, like, hors d'oeuvre table? You you speak sign language? You does, can say hors d'oeuvre table? Does Vesta speak sign language? No, but Elmira does, because he's next to me. Oh! <laughs> I do that then! Elmira nods, and you guys go around and down a stairwell and meet back down there where it's nice and quiet. <laughs> How convenient that that worked out that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so. Um, we have 
you've you've uh, had a chance to see the uh yes we've looked oh man close uh, earrings pretty impressive right yeah very impressive all right so are we are we all set to uh deliver a presentation to vulcan absolutely um it seems like there's kind of a crowd around it right now um yeah should we wait until it thins a bit or well there are Ooh. some guests that i don't really want to talk to that i wasn't expecting to be here that I feel like we, you know, I'd rather kind of get in and out before we have to, oh, make small talk with Chet. Oh, uh, gosh, Chet. Didn't know he would be here. No! <laughs> Man, what a history you have with that guy. Could we... In that case, we definitely don't want to wait for the crowds to thin up. Okay. We want to go while there is a crowd, and also before someone else can drag him away. Okay. Um, yes. So, worst case scenario, he tells us to meet up with him later. Yeah. All right, let's go talk to him. Um, okay, do we want to, okay. Yeah, 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 let's go. Let's, let's, let's go in. Do we want to have a strategy to maybe push through the crowd, or are we just, just wait in our turn and... I'm a big guy with a big box. <laughs> Let's do it! <laughs> this is basically the non-combat version of Reggie's combat build. You take up a lot of space, and you know how to move around, and you quickly get past the people who don't sort of muscle up. Before too long, you're around a couple of, like, you know the people that are just kind of people, mm -hmm. but they carry themselves like they're indestructible, and not in a good way, like a very, like, self-important. Mm -hmm. yeah. These people make it in the business world, and they're the people ahead of you. You have to physically wait because they genuinely do the like, haha, yeah, as you're behind them. Like, and that's what I was saying as you try to circle around, right? Eventually, they finish their pitches and then you guys make it up to Vulcan. This is Baez. Baez, go. All right. She goes, and she goes, wait. And as you push forward, she goes, I, I was the, the process and the, and you're the finance. What, who's the, I go up to Vulcan. <laughs> Don't what? want there to be any confusion. <laughs> All right. What are you saying? Vulcan, man, I, I'm loving what you're doing here. I've, I've been loving this this whole time. And like, I have, we have something to show you and you're, you're going to be so amazed. He puts a hand on your shoulder. He goes, it means so much to hear you say that 15 stamina. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so what is it you have to show me? Oh, it's, we can't really, we can't really show everybody around, but we really want to, like, we're, I'm so proud of what we've put together for you. Like, we just... Of course, of course, you put something together and you don't want to be too obsequious, I understand. Absolutely. So it's, uh, what, a presentation or is it one of your advisors, maybe? You, my friend! <laughs> Fifteen, as he shakes your hand. It was, uh... uh yes. Benny, yes. Benny, yes. We spoke before. Yes, well, um... I mean, I've been... I'm a bit of an academic myself, and I... <laughs> I think we've come up with a, with a really... A really innovative thing, branching off of, off of your work here, and it's... Well, it's... It, there's this... It's hard to explain, and it's hard... It's then that I, they, I, I gesture to Bea to, like, please yeah. get me out of this so I don't fuck everything up. <laughs> Bea chimes in and goes, some ideas are the sort of things that if you say anything too specific, someone will snipe it up. We've got an opportunity for your product line. Let's leave it at that. And then she looks at you as Steel Fist walks up holding the box. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Roll that convince. You gotta sell the contents of this box. <laughs> and this isn't a roll. Talk to me here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yes. We've been working on this mm -hmm. for quite some time now. Um, we think you're gonna be so amazed and so, like surprised. We're, we're so mm -hmm. excited to show you. Okay, um, math. Four, eight, 12, 14. Plus four, 18. 18. You sh grab the box and you go, 
what we have to show you is something super important, revolutionary. It's going to change your product line. Mm -hmm. It's then that you're out of things to say when he looks at you and he goes, technology. Can I, can I roll science to come up with some scientific sounding words to Absolutely. bolster this? <laughs> and can I roll Mila Tactics to do the same? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you see, sir, um, the, the, like, um, well, I was doing a little bit of research into your, uh, into the Vulcan crystals. I don't think it at all. It's, there's, there's some really astounding things that I don't think that your products are taking full advantage of. Fuck. Uh, okay. seven, ten, nineteen. Seventeen. <laughs> Alright, so you start going off and you go, well, we've been looking at the, uh, the heat in the heat enters change, especially after we get the prototype with the Wii ring and the, the flamethrower. We've been looking at sort of the transfer and what we were thinking is, and then before you say anything, with one hand you go in front of Benny's <laughs> face, like what a guard shouldn't be doing. You slam a hand on top of the box and you go, confidential. <laughs> hey, yes. Sorry, and that buddy. is what it takes for Vulcan to click. And he goes, of course, let me grab some people. Let's sit down. This sounds interesting. And he points to the to a couple of nearest guards of his nearest guards, and then one on the mezzanine who comes down. He starts leading you down a hallway, and then before long, right alongside you, and you, like, it's basically like you're there, talk because you're the head honcho. There's Vulcan, and then your guards are around you. Mm -hmm. Here is Reginald. Here is Milton. You know enough to see that Milton has recognized both of you, and he isn't ratting you out. What a good, what a good kid. Milton is a good boy. Look at this boy. <laughs> Who can say no to this boy? <laughs> well, Vesta, apparently. Yeah, yeah. You're a monster. <laughs> well, I didn't say no to him. I said no to him because he was a kid, right? But, yeah. Man, if Ugh. if we can, I would like to grab him on the way out. Like, come with us. Kidnapping? Oh, we're kidnapping how, him. How close am I to Milton? Uh, you're two people away. Two he's next to away. me, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he's next to Vulcan, and you're next to Vulcan, and you're like... Yeah. Basically, he's in a place where you're close enough to see him, but you couldn't make conversation. It would just be like eye contact, basically. Yeah. You're let around the corner, and then up a stairwell, and then right past that V-ring... And then halfway down a hallway between there and the stairwell where there was an opening. Okay. He leads you through an open door, and you move into what is clearly a bedroom. If anything, it's a little much. There's leopard print. There's already some people in here, sort of like... You're not sure why they're there. There's just hot people in a room, and then they leave? I know why they're there. <laughs> <laughs> and then, sure enough, like, this is noble quarters so like a bedroom isn't a room with a bed in it like there's mm -hmm. a changing area there's like a place where someone could sit and have a meal there's a little desk and you guys sit in sort of like a little lounge area is there a the window side. yep first thing i do is i'm gonna go to the window i'm gonna announce as a, i'm doing it so you'll excuse me but with all the v-rings going off you know it's it's just been real hot and <laughs> just open the window code on you oh. saw, as you're putting it down, you see in the corner of your eye, Elmira turn in the corner and noticing the coat. And just go, oh man, that is much better. Much, much better. <laughs> okay. Alright, so oh. you guys are in here. There are four guards. Four guards, okay. One of them is Milton. One of them is Milton. Alright, well, I... I, I... I know you said I wasn't technically allowed in the formal meeting, but... I was okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you can excuse yourself. <sighs> I'm, that's what I do. I excuse myself. Okay. So you have a secret to tell me, eh? I, we really do. It's... Man. <sighs> okay. So at this moment, I'm going to look over at Reggie. And I'm going to look at Elbjorn. Are they, like, in position? Elbjorn's in position? Reggie's in position. He's he's setting mm -hmm. himself a little bit close to one of the other guys. 
Oh, as I leave, I say, just give a give a shout if you need me. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess. Do I know? Is it if I say the phrase at all? Like, mm-hmm. can I whisper the phrase and it'll still go off? Yep. Okay, that's what I do. I don't whisper it loud enough, like, so that there could be some kind of confusion. Well, okay, hold on. Yeah. That's how quiet the room is. <laughs> true. True. Oh, okay. You're full of shit. You you all heard me say that. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. All right. I just. Yeah. So as I I, I go yeah. like I'm about so to. He goes. So you have a secret to tell me. I do, Vulcan. You're full of shit. There's a. You hear an explosion, and then you hear quacking. He looks at you and he goes, Excuse me. And off goes the head. Eldrin moves into position. Perfect. Everyone has a surprise round. Yes! Reginald. I am going to attack the nearest guard that's not Milton. <laughs> that's not Milton? Because I was not positioning myself near Milton intentionally. Uh, all right, so that would be weapon drawn slash. Ooh, it's funny. Uh, that's 10, 13, and 19 damage. All right. So you go for a swing and cleave at the guard. The guard's still all right. They're wearing armor, but now that guard's off kilter. Who else hasn't gone? I would like to go next. Mm-hmm. I would like my turn, though, to be, like, turn to Milton mm-hmm. and say to him, you should come with us. He... <laughs> I'd like to convince for that. Roll it. Hold up the copper bar, maybe. Like... <laughs> yeah, like, literally just open the thing and just be, like, emptying out the <laughs> copper bars to throw his head in. And it's just like, <laughs> Milton, come with us. I want it to be like not like a threatening you should come with us, but like a please Milton. Yeah. You don't you don't want to be a you don't want to be on their side. You know. As we just decapitated Ooh, Milton. That wasn't like very a good. Dude in front of him. Two, four. <laughs> and Milton the front dead. Four, dun, 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 dun. So that's eight. So oh, that's God. a that's a twelve. Well, you overstepped it by a seven. He looks at you and he just goes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's then that the guard that you cleave at, he goes to reach for a weapon, and then you see Milton basically grab that, shove it back in, and then with the other one he goes into the guy's throat. Yeah. Milton, what a good guy. Loving this boy. Best boy! Best boy! <laughs> Steel Fist runs towards one of the other guards, and he basically does like a, with just the fist, like a jab, 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 clock! And the dude just goes out of one of the windows. Okay, is there, um, is there a, a head in a box? It, or how how what's close happening? is the other guard to me, and how close is that guard to a window? The other guard is across from you, closer to where Bea is. Uh, what's Henny doing? Henny is standing outside on lookout duty, mm-hmm. uh, observing hopefully the chaos that's ensuing. Yeah, there how were, much chaos is ensuing? There were two guards who were inside, like sort of at the ends of the hallway, and there were a few guests talking. Basically, the guards were like, come with us, we need to investigate, and everyone left. You're clear. Okay, I'm... This is nowhere near that fire fire hall and exit, is it? It's nowhere near in the sense that this is a big place, but you... Okay. It's like down a long-ish hallway, and then halfway down a stairwell. Uh, Okay, I'm plotting plotting my escape and making note of any guards that are going to come back. Basically, just try and make everything go as smoothly as possible. We need to book it out of here. All right. Uh, at this point, Bea fights with a shotgun. She isn't sure what to do, so she just butt whips one of the guards. Doesn't seem to do much. Uh, I'm going to move my full movement. Am I in range to yeah. hit him? I want to shell shock him <laughs> and push him out a window if I can. Yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> The shield bash lets you move like space on the board, and this yeah. isn't mapped on the board, so I'm going to say you yeah, rush towards entire, him. It's and entirely you... up to you whether or not mm-hmm. I can actually do it. You sort of like spin around the edge of the room and then sort of go a low check, and right as you make contact, you spin, and with your shell, heave. The guy crashes out another one of the windows. And then just kind of 
All right, everyone, get, get rid of the body. <laughs> Milton, grab it. Head! The... head. <laughs> it was like, Vesta, put the head in the thing. Yeah. Elbjorn, put his body out yeah. the window. So and... basically, you start going like, uh, Elbjorn, and that's the end of your turn. Yeah. <laughs> just immediately just being like, all right, military showed orders, listen for a chickadee. <laughs> all right. So, yep, you hear a chickadee. Mm -hmm. Chickadee-dee-dee. And... Uh, so the guard that steel, so you and Milton killed a guard, Steel Fist punched one out the window, you shell shocked another one out the middle of the window, Vulcan is decapitated, the last one was Milton, and he's on your side now. Perfect. The room's clear, you have a head, you have a box, you have a body. Albion's grabbing the, the body, he heaves the body off into a closet, because what do you know, you're in a bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> you take the box, clunk, open it head clunk you lock it because you lock these yeah and whew, as you're going to grab your jacket you whew, the box out you see elmira catch and Perfect. head off okay run let's grab, go grab the cloak put on all right out the door all right um have i noticed anything that would impede our escape to the fire hall uh you haven't heard anything that would impede it, but right as all of you guys like go like go go go, and you're kind of like rushing your way along, Trunk makes his way up the stairwell after managing to get away from the commotion. Or no, Trunk was staying behind, right? Trunk was making the commotion, then yeah. leaving with the whole yeah. mess of people. Okay, so you don't see Trunk. Trunk is not with you. Elmira is not with you. Everyone else is. You hear the sound of people going. It was a detonation. Check on Vulcan. Somewhere echoing in these hallways. Everyone roll grace. Uh, nine. Four. Fourteen. Alright, this is about taking damage to pass. You just need a ten for now. Okay. Oh, okay. Perfect. I'll take that one damage. Okay. You guys rush past the hallway and manage to cross over one side before guards pour down this way. You hear the sound of them coming, and you're making your way towards the stairwell when you hear clunk, 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 people coming up. I'm going to need another grace, delicate, or brawn roll. Everyone has to agree, depending on how you want to do this. Oh, everyone has to agree on a roll? Yep. Okay. I'm good at grace. I'm two dots and delicate. I have four dots and grace. How about you? Anything? Nothing. Okay. I, will I, follow I your say lead. we go Grace because I have higher physical, so okay, I'll Grace be able is. to succeed. All right, you guys just book it. Five. Ten. Uh, twelve. All right, this one you need a twenty-five to succeed. Okay. okay. Uh, it's a thirteen. This one, however, keep in mind you don't have to take damage to pass. You can fail and then keep escaping. I, I'll, I'll take, take it. it. Yeah, I'll take it. Right. How's your health doing? Not good. <laughs> you guys run down the hallway, and you manage to make your way to the stairwell on the other side, right as there's a couple of them going around the corner as the other ones come up the stairwell. You hear, like, he's missing! You don't hear the word dead. You okay. hear the sound of other guards patrolling around these hallways. You have a brief moment to hide halfway down the stairwell as they go, and then you're back. This is the last one. It's a long, empty hallway. You hear echoey sounds of soldiers somewhere. At the end of the stairwell, halfway down, halfway down, just like one, one of those is where the firewall exit is. However, you're going to run right past where the detonation happened. Like, there's a hallway. That's where your exit is. This is where you are. Hallway, explosion. Right, so we would have to deal with flames unless you want to go back up a level or back down a level uh not flames but commotion commotion right i feel like commotion is fine to deal with we could just go through it everybody's freaking out yeah we can each make our way through a crowd well so if you fall I, the thing me... is i can't <laughs> take any damage like i'm i'm yeah. at the point where yeah you're at the point where you can't i can't really fail to succeed uh check um Penny, best Ten. If you, if you get hurt, I will patch Eight. you up. Okay, let's go. Seven. I grab Bea's hand and say, if we don't make it, I love you. Through and the, I sprint! Through the commotion. Through the commotion. 
I'm running. I don't know what the rest of y'all doing. I'm That's grabbing, worse, then. I'm grabbing Milton by the collar. Oh, you don't need to. He's faster than you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, almost well, to grab I go to grab him by the collar, and he's gone. So I grab Vesta instead. So we're doing All grace. Right. Mm -hmm. This one's oh, a another 20. One. Actually, you know what? Ooh. I'm going to say this. You guys as a group can decide if it's going to be a 50 damage, and you just do it. Or if it's going to be a 25, and there's an odd and even roll you're going to have to do. I can't take 50 damage. Uh, what are you at? 52. Yeah, I, I think at that point, Vessel will get across the hall and then pass out. Yeah. So, best course of action would probably be to do a 25 odds yep. and evens. 25 odds and evens. All right. Do you have any potions on you? Yes. Can I chug one? <laughs> 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 Christ. <laughs> yeah, roll it. Okay, that's just like an alchemy roll, eh? Okay, because yeah, it turn used to... to the alchemist. Do you have any yeah. potions? <laughs> okay. Ten. Oh, oh shit, that was that's two. another ten. Nine, so I'm taking seven, another thirteen 17, damage. Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Oh. All right. So as you're running downstairs, you're basically like, chug, 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 chug. You shove the empty bottle back in your pack, and you're, and you start booking it. <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, you, yeah. <laughs> you run across the hallway as you hear that basically, like, all the guards and a bunch of people are running away from that direction. Long odds. Everyone as a group agree. Odds or evens? Evens. Evens. Yeah, okay. Evens. An even and an odd. An even and an odd. Oh, fuck. You guys make it past the stairwell. You make it through the firewalls. And you're about to close the doors when you see a bunch of people going through. And people... And you're freezing because you see a few guards there. And then the guards go, Emergency exit! This way! Do I have the flamethrower on me? <laughs> Good question. Who had the flamethrower? <laughs> well, I hey. like it would either be me, Elgorn, or Steel Fist. Steel Fist can be a flamethrower. <laughs> can I? True. <laughs> I have a firebomb and I have wilding salt. I was I was gonna say I have the pouch of wilding salt. I was just gonna say Steel Fist pull and chuck it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I and they chuck, close the doors. I chuck the the thing of wilding salt out mm -hmm. and say Steel Fist pull. <laughs> As he's doing that, he goes like, Whoop! and as he does that, there's like a burst of flame that like sniper fire, boom! Of <laughs> course. <laughs> On the other side, you hear, firewalls compromised, different way! <laughs> you run down a long section of corridor, and then you reach a T intersection. Right. All right, you turn right, and you see what looks like a recessed door. Further ahead, you feel like a breeze coming towards you. Towards the breeze. All right. Breeze means out. Yeah. You guys make your way to where the firewalls meet an alleyway. From here, there's like a small section of street that goes both ways. You're not sure where you are in the city, but one direction looks fancier, one direction looks a bit poorer. Fancier. That's where the house is. Yeah. I don't think we're going back to the house. We need to get out of the city. We need to get the rest of our people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're still watching that house. Oh, you're right. Okay, fine. Back to the house it is. Yeah. All right. We might want to cover our tracks because mm -hmm. this is the first place they'll investigate the compromised firewall exit. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> you guys make your way out into the streets proper. Here, you're in a like lesser s street in the fancier part of the city. You're not sure where you are, but you can head towards what looks like a market and towards what looks like the sound of sirens. What would I market? Yeah, yeah, we can head towards the market. Have we not been in this part of the city? You guys haven't been in much of the city at all. At all, you've been busy. I didn't find any any like maps that would help us out here while I was trying to figure out the firewall. They conflict. Shit. Okay. You're currently going like basically you're running, and by the time you find where you are on your map, you've made a turn and then another turn, and you have to. I asked Milton if he knows where we are. Ah, uh, shit. I think so. Uh, follow me. Okay. Okay. He goes towards the 
you guys said you were going towards the market, right? Or did yes. you ask him before making the choice? No, we'll ask him before making the choice. Yeah. Uh, but we were planning ahead towards the market. He leads you towards where the sirens are going. Okay. Do you abide? Sure. Yes. All right. You guys hear, like, the sirens, of course, which are, like, a mechanical kind of thing. And there's a bunch of people running by um, elementalists with big buckets of, like, not buckets of water. They just have buckets, but you see that they're all like water elementalists running along. He pauses you for a moment, and then you're out, and you're in the main street. You found where you are. Perfect. Back to the house. Back to the house. Quickly. All right. You guys run, and you make it back to the house just as you see Trunk and Elmira turning a corner down the road, heading towards you as well. Okay. As you look, you see that your stable door is open. Well. That's where you. Yes. Milton, do they have any? Do they know where we were? Uh, no, I, Bobby was in charge of this area, so if we don't know where he is. He probably had no idea. Bobby. <laughs> okay. As <laughs> Trunk and Elmira run towards you, like you look and you see, um, like Rollins is in there, and he goes, "What are you doing? Run in!" He's like by the stable door. Yeah. Like okay. you didn't <laughs> notice him at first. He's like down there, and he's like, "Come on, come on!" Okay, inside, inside. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you guys rush inside, and then there's a clunk, clunk. Perfect. Now we need to get out of the city right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we need to get out of the city right now. Or we need we had a contract to keep this guy's house safe, but like I'm sure he'll understand. Well, how much longer is the contract? It is for one more week. <sighs> yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> quick meeting. Um, so we told this guy that we were going to watch his house, signed a contract, all that, and then if we leave, we're breaking that contract. Good rule of thumb is to never break two laws at once. Um, you know, we don't want to get investigated for that. We don't want two prices on our head. Okay, well, why don't we just leave some people here for a week and they'll meet us in the next place we're going. So that's what I'm suggesting. I don't know if there's anybody that would be safe doing that. Um, Johnstone? Johnstone. To do what now? To, to stay in the house. To stay behind. Because we all were at the party. We're all suspicious. We all have people mm -hmm. actively looking for us. Do we have anybody that isn't be actively being hunted down? You guys look around the group. Uh, shortly after you guys have gotten in, uh, the group that went off adventuring comes in. They're doing this for the party, so you guys get a cut. You get a gold each. Cool. And it seems that for the most part... I give my gold to Milton. <laughs> He thanks you. A lot of the party that returns is confused by the sight of Milton, of course. <laughs> Good news is, we had negative one casualties. That's <laughs> true. You guys pulled a Lichtenstein. <laughs> okay. Well, you also killed someone. You have their head in a box. Well, that wasn't really a casualty. That it wasn't was a, our that casualty. Was, and yeah. I guess you can't prove that you killed two of the guards. And he's also not dead. <laughs> yeah, and you did definitely kill one of the guards, but no, it's not Milton. It's fine. It's all good. Yeah, that's on Milton's conscience. Okay, so uh, quick meeting. Here's the plan. Um, we... So John Stone, Corvo, Rollins, and well, any of the traitors. Bea wants to stay with you, of course, and Bea. Bea has to get out, but Tiffany and Elawald also like. They're all very much like they don't have a lot of association with you guys, so they're subtle people. Um, so, uh, here's the situation. We found out that there were some men, Milton among them, that were tracking us down, trying to kill us. But okay, it... Johnstone, Corvo, I think the tra the traitor should stay here. So the four of them. Okay. Um, Corvo, he can keep in touch with us. Yep. Once the contract is done, they can leave, meet up with us in the next city we were planning to go to, which was... I think we were planning on heading south. We were. I just forget the name of the city that we were going. Yes, I can't remember. Either. Um. Well, that's. I would <laughs> like to pick a smallish village to meet up in, lay low until the rest of our party joins us. Okay. Um. I feel like going to a big city would draw too much attention. Um. Uh. So you guys are taking Milton with you as you flee, leaving behind the skeleton crew. Yes. 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 All right. I mean, but it would be dumb to leave Milton behind. He's the most recognizable of all of us. Any yeah. of their crew would be able to recognize yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. As you guys throw your stuff haphazard and get ready, uh, Milton sort of like, he clings to you a little bit as everyone's running around. Like he's 
aware that he's suspicious, so he's staying within sight of people. Mm -hmm. But he's giving you basically the lowdown, going like, all right, so currently the people who are out looking, there's Dreadnought, Pappy, and Bobby. Bobby sees us, doesn't matter. He's completely not useful. Pappy sees us, we'll get caught. Dreadnought sees us, we'll get chased and probably killed. It's a scary motherfucker. Okay. And you said that Bobby's watching over this section of the city, right? Yeah. If we head out through the gate in this part of town, we might be under scrutiny because there was just that detonation, but that'll be the way out that's unguarded. Okay. Did you watch over a certain section of the city? Well, this was our plan for the night. Okay. Perfect. Okay. We'll head through this section of the city. Yeah. Nearest gate. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Um, all right. You guys leave behind the rest of your party as you all get onto your wagons and you head towards the noble gate. You're about to make the corner when you see that it's going to be closed soon, it looks like. There's... It looks like there's people getting ready to go up into the towers and close the gates. My first thought is, Elmira, take them out! <laughs> Shoot ya! Um, Just keep going, and like, uh, will we not make it to the, to the gates before they close them? Well, there's a bunch of guards there who are looking for people like you, and they're about to go up and close the gate. What's your plan here? Mm. Um... They're looking for descriptions, or they're just they're just keeping an eye out for suspicious people's. They're, that. they're guards. I see what you're saying. Okay. No, uh, there's a guard. No, they're city guards. They want to know your fucking business. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh Milton, how good are you at pretending to be sick? Sure, I'm yes. not. Fuck them up. Just run. They aren't gonna chase us. They got a guard to keep. Okay, let's run. Yep. All right, you guys. Some of you are on horseback. Some of you are on wagon top. And as you go, you hear them going. Slow for inspection, we got, hey, hey, slow for, hey, hey! And then suddenly there's like, stop, fire! And you, there's crossbow bolts going, stunk, stunk, stunk. And everybody roll odds or evens. Nice. Evens! Yay! Evens. Odds. I forgot to say something, so I'm just going to roll again. Odds. Fuck. <laughs> All right. So, both of you guys have crossbow bolts that whiz towards you for Six. 10, 13, 19, 19 precise damage. Okay. Uh, so, that's okay. 19, you said? Yep. And my armor is giving you 9 from 23. Okay, so I'm wearing chain, mm -hmm. which I think is. Vulnerable. Vulnerable to precise. So that does that double the damage? Hmm? That doubles the yeah. damage? Okay. What's 19 times 2? I think you also have the same vulnerability because you're changing. No, it plate. doesn't double the damage. We just the armor doesn't affect. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> the armor doesn't apply. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's yeah. just 19. Right, yeah. Yeah. Just 19 damage. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Keep so. having to say that. <laughs> that was the rule that we decided on. And if it's not the rule, hey, look, tell I, me now and I'll I stop am, saying I'm it. I'm happy to have you remind me what the rules are of this game. And I say that 100% genuinely because I've written them so many times and rewritten them that I don't remember what the actual rules are. <laughs> and the reason why I remember that is because I was just watching the video where it came up again. Uh... I need a doctor. <laughs> At your service. <laughs> fuck, fuck, shit. <laughs> oh, why didn't you move out of the way? Actually, um, is Vest in your by me? Uh, well, there's presumably Bea left with the wagon, Tiffany and... Edelwald stuck around with theirs. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't be on a horse, so I'm also with yeah. the wagon. I... Uh, would you be on horseback or on a wagon? I, I'm just wondering if oh, I... Oh, no, right. if... Your horse is pulling Reggie's wagon. Yeah. yeah. I'm just wondering if Stonewall rules apply. <laughs> I believe they would, actually, yeah. I'll protect her from the damage. All right. Ker Chow! Okay. So basically, add... I guess I can't do 23. Uh, add 14 to your threshold. To my threshold? Yep. So, so that's would... 12 plus you need 22. To... Yeah, so you're no. fine. Well, because it's the vulnerable damage, your original threshold doesn't apply. The one from the benefit does, and you can still use a defense. Okay. So I think you're good. <laughs> like, you well, with your shield to... alone. Can I... Can I... The damage was for 19? Yeah. Yeah, I still have a shield. 
Yeah, and I give you 14. Mm -hmm. 14 plus the shield, which is a tower shield, which was like... Kite shield. Kite, Kite shield. shield. So I think that was three. Three. So you're at... 17. 17. So basically... So just dodge, yeah. The... Dodge? Use, use an off turn to, to move out of the way like I told you to. I scream and dodge. Six. We did All right. It. You go ah, and as you do, and as you duck down, ready sort of goes hunk, and pulls you towards him, and you feel a Ooh, close. right behind you. Uh, I'm checking on the NPCs. Is everyone else okay? Seems like for the most part they're fine. Bea seems kind of shaken up. She hasn't really done the whole violence thing a lot. Okay. <sighs> oh shit! Also, I have close calls, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna use my defensive. It's fine. I have three per adventure. <laughs> <laughs> So Bea just kind of looks at you and was like, we we killed some people. Yeah, no, well, that's great. Yeah, I mean, that yes. tends to happen around us. <laughs> just like, like Vulcan, I get, like, and I know it's us or them, but like, we, they're, they're dead? Mm. Yeah, no, they, the it's... are over. It's Trunk here? Mm -hmm. I, I call Trunk over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not good, it's not pretty, it's not ideal, and like, it's... I didn't want this either. I. All right, you guys ride off into the darkness, and we'll see everybody next week. Woo! Yay! Man, we did it though. We fucking did it. We decapitated it's that. It's a boy. head in a box. <laughs> it's my head in a box. And with the decapitation, that does of course lead to the end of the headhunter's arc because you found it. You hunted it. I hunted the head. I hunted that head. Yay. Which so, means next time around we're gonna be up to something else. Now where to put it? Okay, hey, I have a question. How much is one adventure? Is one adventure? That's a session. Mm. A session. Yeah. Like yeah. like one like this like this yes. is an adventure. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I but I took Stonewall like the first session like the mm -hmm. first level yeah. up like one of the first I haven't used it. Until this moment. Which is really weird, because that seems like an ability that you'd use, like, every fight. It's just yeah. contextually... <laughs> contextually, I'm always the one getting hit. <laughs> the Which... only time that someone has been near me and gotten hit was Henny in the first episode before I had it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now it's finally paid off. And now it's fine. And I can use three of those in Adventure. <laughs> I thought an Adventure was, like... An arc? An arc. Nah, an arc is too broad. Yeah, that would be hard to classify. Although I guess you could home rule it to be a an arc. Yeah. Well, in any case, we're going to pick things up again in time. Yep. You can find us live here at twitch.tv slash mrcrum. You can find us online on the YouTubes, if you want to watch the arcade version of these, at youtube.com slash mrcrum. We have the rules for this game at bloodline.fandom.com. Uh, currently, if you check, it'll be kind of far up there on the Discord, but our Facebook has a more recent link to a poll. We're going to be going into a character's backstory if you want to submit your opinion. And is there anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, so as Will said, the VOD for this will be up uh, probably tomorrow. I am going to mute the fire alarm sound that went off in the middle of the stream. Yeah. So you won't be hearing that, and if you're watching this on YouTube, you're welcome. <laughs> so yeah, and we'll if just you watch... like, suddenly start freaking out. Yeah. yeah. And, like, what? yeah if worry, you watch, if fine. you watch the Twitch, you get the benefit of finding out all this live stuff as it happens. If you watch the YouTube, you get the benefit of having it edited out. <laughs> Best of both worlds, if you check though. <laughs> um, so Wait, on Friday, no. I'm planning to do a stream. There is. In the Heroes of Hammerwatch Discord, mm -hmm. there has been a gauntlet that has been thrown down mm -hmm. uh, for a speedrun challenge of, of the game. First to kill the dragon in the fastest amount of time. And so I'm going to be attempting that with a twist. I've Ooh. invited a certain goose to come and help me out. <laughs> a certain goose? A certain goose. Surely not. Oh yeah. Surely not. Oh yes. In all of his honking glory. <laughs> so, I'm going to be trying a speedrun with, it, I guess it's a tool-hindered speedrun. <laughs> um, and we're going to see how that goes. And uh, if honking and Heroes of Hammerwatch are not your thing, 
then on Monday, I'm going to be starting Dragon Age, and mm -hmm. I've been asking around, and I'm going to, I know what I'm going to be playing, and I think I know what race I'm going to be playing, so it's going to be interesting. All right. Yes. So, so we'll see you then. Yeah. Bye, everybody.